This podcast details true crime cases. It contains adult themes and may contain descriptions of violence. It is not intended for children. Listener discretion is advised. Thank you for joining me for today's episode of Once Upon a Crime. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you're probably enjoying the long, lazy days of summer right now. Many take the opportunity to enjoy the sunny weather by taking a road trip or a family day at the beach. If you're lucky, you may be able to swing something more upscale, like a vacation at a swanky resort. In this month's series, I'll share cases of vacations that turn deadly. Even in the most serene and beautiful locations, murder never takes a holiday. This week, an award-winning television producer, his beautiful and successful Brazilian-born wife, and young children take a family vacation to a tropical resort. When Monica Beresford Redmond is found murdered just yards from their hotel suite, her husband becomes the main suspect. Was the circumstantial evidence, all pointing to Bruce Beresford Redmond as the murderer, merely a series of coincidences or proof of his guilt? Was he a victim of terrible luck or did he resort to murder? This is the first episode in the series, Resorting to Murder, Bruce Beresford Redman. It's only 10 weeks until CrimeCon UK, the world's best true crime convention. CrimeCon UK will take place in London, September 21st and 22nd, 2024, and you don't want to miss it. The weekend will be filled with true crime presentations and experiences from leading criminologists, forensic experts, journalists, celebrities from the true crime world, and more. You'll also have the chance to meet all your favorite true crime podcasters from around the world. I'll be there to meet you and talk true crime. Spending a weekend in London with so many true crime fans is always a highlight of my year. To join me at CrimeCon UK, go to crimecon.co.uk to get more information and register to attend. Use my discount code once upon for 10% off your ticket. That's crimecon.co.uk and use offer code once upon to get 10% off your ticket. And I'll see you there. Bruce Beresford Redmond noticed the dark haired beauty the moment he stepped into Zabumba in 1997. Zabumba was a restaurant nightclub in West Los Angeles that had become a hot spot for locals and tourists alike. Taking its name from the large brass drums that create the vibrant sounds of samba bands, Zabumba featured Brazilian food in its restaurant and a lively dance floor where guests moved to samba and salsa beats. The brunette with the brilliant smile Bruce noticed right away was one of the restaurant's owners. Monica Burgos was born in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil and took over the restaurant from its previous owners in 1994. Her sisters, Carla and Gianni, were also investors, and together they ran the restaurant as a family affair. Monica was outgoing and vivacious. She was also driven and fearless in whatever she did. Her fun, lively spirit and exotic beauty attracted many men to her, but Bruce Beresford Redmond soon won her over. Like so many other Los Angeles natives, he was pursuing a career in television. But his creative talent, coupled with his ability to charm studio heads, would soon launch his career. Now, he turned this charm towards Monica Burgos. Before long, they were an item. They both enjoyed the good things in life, were adventurous, and worked hard towards their individual careers, Bruce as a television producer and Monica as a restaurateur. After two years of dating, Monica and Bruce were married. Life just kept getting better for the couple. Monica's restaurant continued to be profitable. Zabumba received a glowing review from the Los Angeles Times newspaper as the place to go for a, quote, taste of Rio in West LA. Bruce's career also hit its stride when he became a field producer on the popular television series Survivor in 2002. Just two short years later, he became the executive producer for another reality show, starring the rapper Exhibit, titled Pimp My Ride. In the five-year run of Pimp My Ride, it was nominated for an Emmy Award three times in the category of Reality Variety Television Show. 
Bruce and Monica moved into a $2 million home in West Los Angeles and started a family. Their daughter Camilla was born in 2005 and their son Alec in 2007. But the very things that led to their financial success threatened to tear the couple apart. Cracks in the marriage began to form, with both Bruce and Monica working long hours. Their work schedules often overlapped, leading to more time apart. The wonderful life they could have had together came crashing down in the spring of 2010 when Monica discovered her husband's secret life. Bruce Beresford Redman had achieved his dream of becoming a successful television producer. He'd married the love of his life, had two children, and lived in an upscale Los Angeles neighborhood. He'd also grown close to casting director Joy Pierce, with whom he worked. In fact, he confided to his mother Juanita, he had fallen in love with Pierce. She urged him to end the affair and recommit himself to his wife and children. He agreed it was the right thing to do, but he didn't stop seeing Pierce. In March 2010, Monica overheard a snippet of a conversation between her husband and Pierce that made her blood run cold. She wasn't entirely sure what she'd heard, so she did some investigating. Soon, she discovered emails and texts between her husband and Joy Pierce that left no doubt that they were involved in a sexual relationship. She confronted him with the evidence, and he admitted the affair. He told her it was over and asked for her forgiveness. As soon as she confirmed the affair, Monica withdrew assets from their joint bank account and moved them into another account. She discovered that Bruce had paid for hotel stays and restaurant tabs and purchased expensive gifts for his lover, including a watch he'd given Pierce when Monica was pregnant with their first child. After discovering that contrary to his promises, her husband was still involved with Pierce, she demanded a divorce. Monica said that if he agreed to the divorce, she would give him half the money she had transferred to the new account. If he refused, she threatened to keep all the money for her and the children. She also changed the locks on their Palos Verdes home and told Bruce to stay away. She took the children on a trip to Hawaii, refusing to allow her husband to accompany them. At the end of March, Bruce told Monica he'd made a big mistake and didn't want to lose her or the children. He pleaded with her to give the marriage another chance and promised to break off the affair. Camilla and Alec were only three and five years old, and Monica didn't want them to be children of divorce. Monica, who was very close to her parents and siblings, valued family very highly, and she still loved her husband, so she agreed to attempt to work things out with Bruce. They had an annual custom of taking a vacation in the springtime, just in time for Monica's birthday on April 7th. They now planned a family vacation to Mexico. It would give them time together to begin repairing their marriage. They booked a hotel suite at the Moon Palace Hotel and Resort in Cancun, Mexico, to celebrate Monica's 42nd birthday, arriving on March 31, 2010. The Moon Palace was an all-inclusive resort hotel with rooms averaging $550 per night. Some of the amenities at the posh resort included fine gourmet dining, unlimited premium drinks, beachfront rooms, a 27-hole Jack Nicholas golf course, a spa, exotic excursions, and nightly entertainment. On April 4th, Monica spoke with her sister by phone. She was upset and shared that she learned Bruce was still in contact with his mistress. That evening, a hotel employee reported seeing a couple matching Bruce and Monica's description arguing in front of one of the hotel's restaurants. The woman was crying, he said. The employee further noted that the man raised his hand as if to strike the woman, but when he noticed him watching, he stopped and the couple walked away together. On April 6th, Bruce reported that his wife left their hotel alone the day before, about 10 a.m., to go shopping and to the spa. He didn't expect her back until after 10 that evening. He had gone to bed at 10 and only noticed she'd not returned when he awoke the next morning. He called and reported her missing at 7 a.m. Bruce Beresford Redman reported his wife missing on April 6, 2010, a week after arriving in Cancun, Mexico for a family vacation. 
Investigators became immediately suspicious when it was determined that Monica had not taken her cell phone, passport, or room key. When Monica's sisters learned Bruce claimed she had planned to be gone from morning until evening the day she went missing, they reported to investigators that was not something she would do. They said Monica was devoted to her children and was their primary caregiver. To leave them like that, on vacation or not, was completely out of character, they said. And, they said, there was no way she'd leave her cell phone behind if they were not with her. The Burgos sisters reported that Monica had discovered her husband was having an affair and was distraught when they spoke to her just two days before she disappeared. She'd learned that he had not ended the affair as he'd promised. Hotel guests were questioned to see if they saw or heard anything suspicious the night Monica went missing. One guest staying in a room near the Beresford Redmonds reported hearing a loud thump and something being dragged or scraped across the floor. Another person reported hearing the raised voices of a man and woman, and what she thought sounded like a woman's scream, coming from the room occupied by the Beresford Redmonds. She was concerned enough to call the front desk and report it. The desk clerk called the room, and Bruce answered. He said that he and his wife had briefly, quote, argued about the children. He said they'd keep their voices down. He also explained that the scream had come from a video game the children were playing. Hotel housekeeping reported that the Do Not Disturb sign had been left on the door of the Beresford Redmond's room all day, so they had not gone in to clean. When they'd seen him briefly outside of the room and asked him if he wanted them to clean or if he needed fresh towels, Beresford Redmond had declined. They had not seen his wife, they said. The search for Monica Beresford Redmond continued. Two days later, a gruesome discovery was made. Her nude and battered body was found on what would have been her 42nd birthday, stuffed into a sewage tank on the hotel property, just yards from her room. The tank had an opening at the top, and one of the covers was left partially open. Another couple came forward to report that their room was located one floor below the Beresford Redmonds. They had two teenage children who told them that they'd heard screams, crying for help, and extremely loud banging the night Monica went missing. They'd reported what they'd heard to their parents the next morning, and now described it for investigators. The investigation also produced evidence that two life insurance policies had been taken out against Monica Beresford Redmond's life by her husband just weeks before her death. One would pay out $500,000 with an additional $50,000 to be paid if death occurred while traveling. Their minor children were named the beneficiaries of both policies. The cause of death was determined to be asphyxia by suffocation. The autopsy further noted the presence of bruising to the face and a blunt force wound to the head. Bruce Beresford Redmond was considered a person of interest in his wife's murder. His key card showed nine trips in and out of the room between midnight and 7 a.m the night Monica went missing. When interviewed by police, they noticed visible scratches on his neck, hands, behind his ear, his left shin, and right ankle. He explained that he'd sustained scrapes on his ankles and shin while climbing a slippery walk wall on an excursion. He said the scratches behind his ear were caused by surfacing too quickly while swimming and hitting a rope connected to a boat. The couple's hotel room was searched for evidence. Blood was found on bed sheets in the couple's room and on a pillar and railing on the balcony. Staff security carefully logged hotel guests' coming and goings from the property. There was no evidence of Monica entering or exiting the hotel property since April 4th. Police told Beresford Redmond not to leave the resort as they continued their investigation. They seized his U.S. passport and told him to remain in town. Not long afterward, he took his children and left Mexico using his California driver's license to cross the border into the U.S., where he returned to Los Angeles. On May 29th, Mexican authorities issued a warrant for his arrest. On November 18th, seven months after his wife was found murdered, Mexican authorities filed murder charges against Bruce Beresford Redman. He was taken into custody and jailed in California on a warrant from Mexico charging him with aggravated homicide. He was held without bail. He obtained a criminal defense attorney who began fighting his extradition back to Mexico.
it's officially vacation season. I just got back from a 10-day trip to Northern California, where it was blazing hot. Not typical for my fair state, but sunshine anytime is welcome, right? You know what's not welcome? Body odor. But not to worry. With Lumi Whole Body Deodorant, I smelled fresh all day, even when the temperatures hit the triple digits. Lumi Whole Body Deodorant is clinically proven to control odor for a whopping 72 hours. So even if you're spending your vacation at a three-day outdoor music festival, you can be confident that you'll be covered. And here's the best part. Lumi products aren't just for your underarms. They can be applied to any area of your body that needs odor control. That's right, you're in control. No need for me to spell it out. You get the idea. From pits to toes and everywhere in between, Lumi products are safe to use and block odor for 72 hours. I'm a big fan of Lumi's whole body deodorant. Their deodorant wipes are easy and convenient to throw into my travel bag, and they come in great scents like toasted coconut, my favorite. There are also unscented versions. And after many requests, Lumi has formulated a new product to keep you smelling fresh and help you stay drier. Lumi Whole Body Deodorant Plus Sweat Control. What more could you want? Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like their mini body washes and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for our listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals over 40% off their starter pack. Use code ONCE for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. lumideodorant.com. Authorities continued to build the case against Bruce Beresford Redman for the murder of his 42-year-old wife, Monica, as he fought extradition to Mexico to face charges. They discovered that the couple's marital problems may have gone back years before the murder. They alleged mental abuse of Monica by her husband. Their nanny reported that the marriage was very strained, and she heard the couple arguing violently the night before they left for their resort vacation. Monica's sisters filed for temporary custody of the couple's children, but their father had left them in the care of his parents. Monica's family and Bruce's family now battled for custody. In November, the courts granted David and Juanita Beresford Redmond custody of their grandchildren. Monica's sisters were allowed supervised visits with their niece and nephew. In 2012, Bruce Beresford Redmond was ordered back to Mexico to stand trial for his wife's murder. He was held in Cancun's Benito Juarez prison while his case wound slowly through the Mexican justice system. Both courts and prisons in the state of Quintana Roo, where Cancun is located, are structured very differently from those in the United States. Rather than a structured trial, a judge is given a report of all the evidence and documentation regarding the criminal case. He can then call witnesses, the defendant, and others at his discretion before deciding on guilt or acquittal and sentencing. There is no specific time frame for the case to be resolved, and it often proceeds slowly to allow each witness to be scheduled for interviews. Beresford Redmond waited for this process to play out while incarcerated in Wadis Prison. Wadis Prison is, in essence, a community of those who've been convicted and those awaiting trial who live and work in slapdash, ramshackle quarters encircled by a high fence. Guards patrol the outside to ensure no one escapes, but inside the walls, it's every man and woman for themselves. Benito Juarez prison has no separation of men and women. Some basic necessities are provided, but prisoners must beg, borrow, barter, and find other ways of getting everything they need while behind bars. Visitors can bring in approved items like food, clothing, and toiletries. The prison is extremely overcrowded. Cells meant to house six or seven prisoners may hold up to 25 or 30, and cellmates negotiate time and space to sleep. Prisoners are free to be out on the grounds inside the prison walls and only lock themselves in their cells, typically at night while sleeping. It's a far cry from the posh resort that Bruce Beresford Redman occupied the last time he visited Cancun. He continued to profess his innocence in his wife's murder. He began videotaping his experience in the Mexican prison 
and shared portions of this video diary with the U.S. true crime television series 48 Hours in 2012. In the video, Beresford Redmond states that, quote, There isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about my wife. I lie awake at night and think of Monica, unquote. He also talks about missing his children, who were now in the custody of his parents in Los Angeles. He says he's making the best of the situation, but adds, quote, Everything I worked for is gone. If I'm convicted, I face 30 years in jail. His defense argued that there was no evidence that proved Monica was killed in the hotel room, as the prosecution alleged. They stated that the head wound would have resulted in a great deal more blood being found in the room if she'd been attacked and killed there. However, investigators presented evidence of footprints and damaged plants leading to the area where the body was found. They said this indicated the body may have been moved from another location before being concealed in the sewage tank. They theorized that she may have been strangled into unconsciousness but received the blow to the head that contributed to her death after being removed from the room. The defense also pointed to two other homicides that had occurred on the hotel property where the couple was staying. Quote, we think police should have looked for other suspects before they arrested our client, attorney Richard Hirsch told ABC News. In 2012, Bruce Beresford Redmond was found guilty and sentenced to 12 years in prison. His parents, David and Juanita, were awarded full custody of the children. On June 20, 2019, Beresford Redmond was released after serving seven years and paying $2,000 to the court in restitution. The laws in Mexico allow for a prisoner's release after serving 60% of his sentence with good behavior. He returned to the Los Angeles area and lived with his mother and children in Gardena. His father had passed away the year before his release. That same year, his mother was made guardian of the children's estate. In 2015, a television movie aired on Lifetime TV titled Murder in Mexico, the Bruce Beresford Redmond story. Bruce Beresford Redmond continued to maintain his innocence. He has kept a low profile and has not announced a return to his former career in television. His former mistress, Joy Pierce, has also kept a low profile and, it appears, no longer works in television. He has not spoken with the press, but the last information I uncovered suggests that he may have moved to Las Vegas with his children. Last Thoughts We've seen several cases like this one where a spouse is murdered by their partner after the relationship hits the rocks. The question always remains, why? Why not just get a divorce and go your separate ways? Why take a life and irreparably damage the lives of so many others, including often your own children? Is it caused by rage that spins out of control instantly and turns deadly? Or is it caused by the weak ego of the spouse that's being left behind? Perhaps it's, if I can't have you, no one can type of motivation. Or is it something else? Ego, pride, or greed? Any one of these motivating factors may have played a role in this tragic story. If Bruce Beresford Redmond was in love with another woman, he could have asked his wife for a divorce and moved on to his new love. Maybe he thought his reputation as a father, as a man, or as a Hollywood producer would take a hit if he left his family. Or maybe it was about money. Was he enraged that his wife was threatening him financially if he didn't agree to a divorce on her terms? It does appear that money played a factor, given the fact that he took out a large insurance policy on her life just before she was murdered. The policy, by the way, that his children collected and his mother controlled after becoming their guardian. But no amount of money can make up for the loss of a mother, especially for children who were so young when she was taken from them. Beresford Redmond claims he is innocent, and his conviction was a miscarriage of justice. For that to be true, he'd have to be the most unlucky man ever born. His wife just happened to be murdered weeks after she discovered he'd been having a long-time affair. She just happened to be killed weeks after he took out large life insurance policies on her, one that would be paid out if she died while traveling. He just happened to have kept the Do Not Disturb sign on his hotel room door, the day after his wife was last seen. He just happened to have used his key card multiple times in the middle of the night after she went missing, even though he said he'd fallen asleep 
and hadn't noticed his wife was missing until the following day. Unlucky indeed. Or was he extremely fortunate? It was fortunate for Beresford Redman that he was tried and convicted in Mexico and not the United States. Although he endured harsh conditions in a Mexican prison, he received only 12 years for the crime and was released after serving only seven. In the United States, if convicted for the same crime, he'd most likely still be in prison and probably wouldn't be released until he was old and gray, if he was ever released at all. That will do it for this episode of Once Upon a Crime. I'll be back next week with another episode in the series, Resorting to Murder, and I hope you'll join me then. Once Upon a Crime is also on YouTube. You can find videos that accompany our episodes by searching for Once Upon a Crime podcast on YouTube. A link is in the show notes. Follow us on social media on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. You can get links to all our social media channels on our website, truecrimepodcast.com. Once Upon a Crime is written and produced by me, Esther Sanchez Ludlow. My executive producer is Lorena Garcia, and my researcher is Emma Bataglia. Until next time, be good to one another.